glad you guys could be here. Um, this morning I will be talking about health education, health curriculum, and more specifically consent education, sexual assault education in my home state of Tennessee. What my research really focused on was how youth are affected by sexual violence. Um, this is a huge issue for me that is very important to me. One of the reasons it is so important is that statistically young people are the most heavily affected by sexual violence. Most people who will be affected by sexual violence in their lifetime will experience it before they're 18, up to 61% of people. So that's a huge deal. And I wanted to see what our sex education um, looked like in our state and kind of how we were dealing with this issue. Because as some of you may know, um, a lot of universities are pushing to change this conversation around these issues and to address these issues. And I just realized that there's probably a gap. And so that's what I started to look at. So the first issue we came across is, as some of you may know, President Obama has been working with colleges and universities to create programs, to create um, curriculum in which we can start addressing these issues at the college level. And the It's On Us uh, task force that they've created is sending out um, representatives from the government to start working with colleges and universities to talk about these issues. And the reason this issue is so, so, so vital to be discussed at the college level as well um, is because one five women will be sexually assaulted when she's in college. That is a staggering number to me that in four years time of a young woman's life is the most likely time that she'll become a victim. Because one of the biggest issues here that we face is that most of the people who would be victimized are freshmen and sophomores. So that really got me thinking, if we're waiting until college to start talking about this issue, but our freshman girls are the most likely to be affected are we waiting a little bit too long to start talking about this? Now, as I began to look and see what um, our schools were doing, I found that California is the only, uh, only state that is going to start, along with their colleges that are now federally going to be required to start talking about consent and sexual assault. Um, their high schools are also going to have to be doing it. Now, to give you a little bit of understanding about what consent education means and what those curriculums are going to look like, is first off, they'll address sexual assault as a broader understanding, what that means, um, how students who are affected um, can handle it, what their resources are, what their legal rights are. But consent education focuses around creating healthy relationships. What does a healthy, safe relationship look like? What does it look like when you and a partner agree? Um, what does it look like when someone's not being pressured, when everything is out in the open and clear? And that's what they're focusing on, to try and curb these things earlier. So the state of Tennessee um, is where I start, is my home state, and that's where I really started to look and see where are our issues, where are we lacking, and what our curriculum looks like. So I've um, highlighted the state, the counties um, that I spoke to in my state. Um, so you can kind of get an idea of where they are so regionally and an idea for those um, counties. And I talked to these four counties specifically because Shelby, Davidson, and Knox County have the highest population in the state of Tennessee. And I also um, work with Montgomery County because that's the county in which I live. And so it personally affects my community and uh, my life. And so I felt that was really important to focus on that and kind of see and build a base for understanding what our education system is doing and what that looks like. Because of those four counties, two million of Tennessee's six million residents reside in just those four counties. So that's a huge section of our population that's being affected. I called them, I emailed them, I sent letters, and I started doing this over the summer. Actually, starting in May, right after I got out last semester. Up until this point, and really up until this uh, last night, in which I received additional contact information, so I regret that that part is not with me this evening, uh, with me this morning, but at the time, only one of them had answered me directly. All of the others avoided answering my calls, did not reply did not reply to letters, and those who um, contacts I did make that did reply would redirect me to other resources and would refuse to answer the questions that I had. The one county that did respond to me directly was Shelby County. And when I asked them specifically, do you discuss consent education, do you talk about sexual assault, and do you talk about sexual violence in your health curriculums and in your sexual education standards, they said no. And uh, on their website, on Shelby County's um, records, their curriculum 
shows that know that they do not. Davidson County, Knox County, and Montgomery County's curriculum also do not have any standards in which they address these issues. But what they did tell me is that they used the Michigan model for sex education. The problem with that statement is that according to the Michigan model of sex education, one of their required standards is that pupils are taught to teach pupils how to say no to sexual advances. It is wrong to take advantage of and harass or exploit another person sexually. As, uh, in addition to that, the Tennessee Lifetime Wellness Curriculum also requires that students be able to identify short-term and long-term effects of sexual harassment and date rape. Yet every county that I spoke to, the largest populated counties in the state of Tennessee, do not have standards in their county that talk about these issues and explicitly stated that they do not discuss these issues. So why is that? Why are we not talking about these things if the state curriculum is telling them they're supposed to be talking about it? Well, most of the educators that I spoke to, both the curriculum um, guiders from the individual counties and outside resources for sex education in the state of Tennessee, believe that their hands have been tied by one of the laws that was mandated in 2012. This has been called the Gateway Bill. And the reason it's called the Gateway Bill is like people talk about gateway drugs. The state of Tennessee has decided that physical contact of any kind cannot be discussed in a classroom because it's gateway sexuality. The Gateway Bill has made it illegal to talk about kissing, touching, anything. The only thing that we can talk about now in the state of Tennessee is abstinence. The only statements that educators can make is that you cannot have sexual contact, do not have sexual contact. If you do, you will get pregnant or you will most likely contract an STD. That is the stance that our state has taken. Um, so they cannot talk about this. When you cannot talk about what, a, what healthy sexual contact looks like, because you can't talk about physical contact in any context because it's now been outlawed, it makes it very difficult for educators to explain or describe what a healthy relationship, what a normal relationship looks like. And so they're not allowed to talk about these issues and they, they feel that their hands have been tied and that they're no longer um, allowed the space in which to discuss these issues. The reason this is such a problem that so heavily affects our high school students and not just our college students, beyond the fact that we are acting retroactively instead of proactively to protect students and educate them, but according to the TBI's most available records, which is the 2012 records for statistics of violence within schools, in the year of 2012, there were 366 sexual assaults in the schools. In schools or on school grounds, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation stated that in that year there were that many arrests for sexual violent acts on school grounds against students. And that does not include the many, many um, reports of sexual violence uh, outside schools in people's homes. And most of the um, violence that we have statistical and, uh, evidence for is partner violence, couple violence. Young people who are in relationships just getting started are the most likely to be affected by this type of violence. So that leaves me with the question is, why? Our state curriculum says we should be talking about it. The models that the, the counties and the state are saying that they suggest to be used say that you should be talking about it, but we are not talking about it. At this time, it is my belief from the response that I have gotten is that because of pushback from the communities out of fear of discussion of sexual violence or because of the laws and standards that have been set in place, that most schools feel like they cannot discuss these things. So we have the ability to be teaching it. We have curriculum standards that say we should, we just aren't. As I go forward into more research, I'm hoping that I will continue to get feedback from my contacts, that I will continue to see evolving information and laws about this subject so that we can make progress. Um, as I stated previously, I actually, um, last night, received an email response after several months of attempted contact that I got a response back from one of my contacts. And I'm hoping 
with the information they provided um, for their new incoming year um, has new standards and that we will be able to see those changes that we're really hoping for. But as of right now, TMC does not reflect the state uh, standards in which we teach about healthy consensual sexual relationships so that we have less sexual violence in our state so that we're moving forward and progressing towards the standards we want to see reflected in college for all of our students. An important quote that I found was from uh, the California senator who was one of the main proponents of pushing uh, the new state regulations for California that allowed them to be able to teach about consent education. And he said, I firmly believe that by instilling in young minds the importance of affirmative consent and relationships built on love and respect, then we can reduce the sexual violence inflicted on young women. And that is also my hope, and that I hope that we can move